The Weatherford Hotel has had its share of famous guests over its 120 plus years, but it's doubtful it ever hosted anyone who was more of a character than artist Jimmy Swinnerton. In 1951, Arizona Highways Magazine wrote the following about the man. Jimmy Swinnerton, the hard-drinking consumptive who should have died 50 years ago, is today a hearty, husky, temperate man whose twinkling eyes and quick wit belie his age. At the time of this article, Swinnerton was 76 years old and would make it another 22 years, dying just short of his 99th birthday. Swinnerton is mainly known as the originator of the modern newspaper comic strip, creating Little Jimmy when he was just 17 years old in 1892. In addition to his cartoon illustrations, he became a celebrated landscape painter, and much of his work in both styles focuses on the terrain and people of northern Arizona. And unlike many of the famous folks who stopped through the Weatherford over the years, Swinnerton's connection to Flagstaff lasted for a lifetime. James Guilford Swinnerton first came to Flagstaff in 1905 as he was sent by his boss and fellow Weatherford guest, William Randolph Hearst, to get some rest and recover from years of alcohol abuse. He was just 20 years old at the time. Swinnerton semi-recovered and returned frequently, staying in the bridal suite of the Weatherford, as well as the commercial hotel and various private homes. In a biography of Swinnerton, there's a description of the Weatherford as it was in the 19-teens. It was a two-story building with a fancy railing around the second floor and conical tower above. Along the sunny side of the hotel was a convenient ledge at street level where some of the local men, including Jimmy, sat, swapped yarns, ogled the girls, and practiced spitting. Later, when Jimmy became socially active, he rented the bridal suite, a small apartment with its own fireplace and wallpaper embellished with cupids, wedding bells, and bows. The hotel, run by Uncle Bert and Aunt Peggy White, was a small, bullet-scarred place frequented by cattlemen and sheepmen, a colorful hotel, but not overly tolerant. One of the early auto parties that sought accommodations encountered Uncle Bert's dog, Buster, sleeping and scratching flea bites under the counter beneath the register. Besides never having been washed, Buster was a famous skunk fighter. One of the ladies sniffed, "'My, what a vile beast!' Uncle Bert leaned over his counter to be sure his ears hadn't deceived him and said, "'No room.'" Actually, I, I'm sorry, that was a Yelp review from last week. Swinnerton is also notable for helping to start the annual Flagstaff powwow and for attempting to make the town more welcoming toward Native Americans. Articles in the Coconino Sun, Arizona Highways, and much later, Platt Klein's celebrated history of Flagstaff Mountain Town recount that Navajos in particular generally avoided Flagstaff due to racism here and instead took their business to Winslow and Holbrook, and that Swinnerton tried to rectify this by organizing the first Flagstaff powwow. Please note that I'm a hotel manager, not an anthropologist, so I can't accurately speak to the aspects of Swinnerton's legacy that deal with Flagstaff's, let alone America's, treatment of Native Americans. His cutesy illustrations of Native children might look reductive to modern eyes, but from reading various accounts of the man, it's my opinion that Swinnerton genuinely appreciated and respected Native Americans in a non-condescending way. Although he visited Flagstaff less often after the 1920s, Swinnerton returned occasionally throughout his life, and the very last gallery exhibition of his work during his lifetime was at Flagstaff's Art Barn in 1969. Although this is a fairly positive representation of the man, it's worth noting that although Swinnerton was very wealthy, he once skipped out on a payment at the Weatherford and was presented with the bill the next time he came to town. Nobody's perfect and we don't hold a grudge. Although Jimmy Swinnerton is not as well-known today as he probably should be, it's apparent that his life was well-lived and that Flagstaff and the Weatherford Hotel are lucky to be parts of his interesting and very long story.